Hi, this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So, if your experience of begonias is restricted to summer bedding, then you're missing out on a whole range of widely varied and hugely interesting tropical plants. So today I'm going to show you my modest begonia collection while we discuss some of the many reasons why I think you should really give tropical begonias a try. Let's jump in. And we are in. So this is what I used to think of when anybody mentioned begonias. I thought of summer bedding, which are all very beautiful for a couple of months in summer. But there is so much more to this fascinating family of plants that you can enjoy in the house or in a greenhouse all year round. I've currently got 14 begonia plants here in the greenhouse. Some of them are relatively new, some of them I've had over a couple of years now, but they're all either cane type begonias, small rhizomatous type begonias, or rex type begonias. There are of course other groups of begonias, all with slightly different characteristics and forms, but here are some of the reasons why I like to grow them, and hopefully you will too. So why grow them? Well, first of all, let's list the practical reasons. Firstly, they are very, very cheap or relatively cheap in my opinion. Why is that? Well, because they're very easy to grow, they're very quick to grow and they take from cuttings really, really easily. Secondly, they're very easy to transport, which lowers the cost, but they're also very, very fast growing, which means that you soon get a decent sized plant. Number four, they have a really wide range of light and temperature tolerances, which make them absolutely ideal as a house plant. Number five, they have a really wide range of available Availability, and a lot of them look very, very different. In fact, many of them you wouldn't even class as begonias unless you were told, and that makes them really, really collectible. Number six, you can bottom water them if needed, so that means that you can set some kind of system up as I have in the greenhouse here, meaning that you're not a slave to daily watering. Number seven, they have a built-in sign to tell you that things aren't quite going right in yellowing leaves and leaf drop. However, they really quickly recover once you have set the conditions to the correct ones. But of course, practicality is nothing without aesthetics. So let's take a look at what makes them so attractive to us houseplant growers. So if you take out of the equation the commonly grown bedding plant begonias, some of the main attractive points to do with begonias are the foliage. You do get blooms and very often they are a bonus, but the foliage and the huge variety and differences in the foliage are what make them so attractive. So you get that all year round, but you then do get the bonus of blooms. Additionally, the young foliage and very often the stems are attractive in their own right, as you'll see as we take a look around my begonia collection. So having listed some of the many reasons why I grow begonias, nothing convinces like looking at the actual plants. So let's take a quick tour of my modest begonia collection. Maybe there'll be something there that you take a fancy to. So the first begonia I'm showing you today is my Begonia Luxuriens. This is the palm leaved begonia. This is just about as far away from what I always thought a begonia was as you could possibly get. Now if you ignore the red flowers there, that's from the mandevilla at the background there, but you can see the palm leaves quite clearly. Absolutely stunning statuesque plant. It's from the cane group and it can grow up to two and a half meters, but it's easily pruned to a manageable height as I've done a few times already. And if I just zoom in a little bit on these beautiful little palm leaves here with the little tiny leaflets in the middle and the red stems, you can really see what an amazing plant this really is. Points to note about this one is that it easily wilts if it's left dry for too long, even though it doesn't really want to be wet all the time, you can leave it to be dry for a few days. It does have apparently fragrant blooms, although I haven't seen them yet or sniffed them. And each leaf has those tiny leaflets, which along with its statuesque form and the coral red stems, for me anyway, makes it a fabulous plant for a well-lit room or a conservatory. And we'll move along here to the fabulous Begonia Listada. So this beauty is another one from the cane group, although it only grows to around 30 centimetres. So the example you see here is roughly, well, it's actually a little bit bigger than that, but I've got it growing sideways, kind of trailing along the benches just for space. And mine has actually just come out into bloom. So even though the blooms are not the reason why I grow it, they are rather pretty and they're held just above the leaves like this on these little stalks. 
and this one does actually have an award of garden merit from the Royal Horticultural Society. So for anybody who sees watering as a chore, this doesn't actually wilt like the Begonia Luxuriance. This one will stay dry for quite a bit longer. And I have mine at the moment anyway, in a tiny little eight centimeter pot. I haven't yet repotted it from when it was still a little baby, but it's perfectly fine as it is. I may well pot it over the winter months, but for now, I'm happy to leave it. And for those who've got it in a conservatory, it will go down to 10 degrees without too many problems over a couple of months but you can always put it into a kitchen if it starts to drop a few leaves when things get a little bit too cold for it. So this one here is Begonia Silver Lace and it's quickly become a favourite for me and for several subscribers who've passed comments about it. I've recently potted it up to accommodate its rapid growth that it's put on this summer. It's a Rex type Begonia, stunning silver, white and green foliage with dark red that kind of comes through those veins and around the edge of the leaves. And in certain light conditions, that red does show through a little bit more, making it a real eye catcher. Like all these begonias, I found it very accommodating with the conditions. It'll take some shade, some dryness, and providing temperatures are kept roughly around 12 degrees or above, it will go lower, but not for a great length of time. But providing you keep them around there, then it'll be absolutely fine. Great in a house, and you can see it's really developing into rather a nice plant. So I'll quickly show you the remaining begonias I have over in the intermediate side of my greenhouse. So this one is Begonia Griffon, a very vigorous grower that I continually have to prune. I particularly love the intricate leaf shapes and patterning on this cane type of begonia. A new begonia for me here, or a relatively new one. So this one is Begonia Connie Boswell, which is an absolute little beauty. I can't wait for this to go much bigger than it is now, but I've only had it a couple of months and you can see it's already put on quite a bit of growth. Just stunning leaves, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. And another new one for me, this is Begonia Green Gecko. I love the swirls and twirls on that and the patterning on the leaves. And this is one that has these particularly hairy stems with lots of white fuzz on it. That's gonna be really nice when that gets bigger. And of course, over here in the corner, I've got Nigra cans, which again is pretty unusual in that there's not many plants that have like these black markings on them and the the darker color comes through more on the lighter or in the lighter conditions so you can see that really is another unusual one and so far hopefully you'll be able to see how different they all are so that's a few of my begonias in the intermediate side of my greenhouse. So the temperatures in here tend to be between 15 and 18 degrees. It can go a lot higher, of course, in the middle of summer, but it won't go any lower than that. But I've got some over in the cooler side of the greenhouse that will go down to 12 degrees, no trouble, even for two or three months. So let's go and have a look at those. So over in the cool side, we're going to start with this little beauty. This is Begonia Bowerite, the tiger paw begonia. And I'm going to lift this one up because it's only when you get it under the light that you can really see all the different colors and textures that you get on this stunning little plant. It doesn't get much beyond about 20 centimeters in height and you can see it's spreading out there on the corners and you can see the eyelashes that give it its other name of the eyelash begonia. If you really get underneath it, it really is like another world, an absolutely stunning little plant and if space is limited, then that's the one that you should get for your kitchen or your bathroom or whatever it is that you've got lots of light for it doesn't really want to be in the sun as none of these begonias do really and that's what makes them so great for in a house. So I've had to pick this one up again because of where it is. So this is everyone's favourite. This one is Begonia Curly Fire Flush. A really, really amazing begonia and it's, it really does look like it's on fire, I think. This one just happens to have another couple of blooms on it and this is the third time it's bloomed this season. So they keep coming and you can really see what makes it such an incredible plant. I repotted this one not that long ago and just because of where I've got it, I don't think it's looking its absolute best at the moment. I've recently been away on holiday, so I've had it on a 
bit of capillary matting just to keep it moist but it really likes to dry out in between so i think that's why it's not looking its absolute best it could really do with a little break from all that moisture but you can see it is really a stunning plant and usually the one that people say that's the one they want to get for themselves when they see it on video and we move over to the fuchsia imposter so this is begonia fuchsiaides i wouldn't say this one is that popular with people i can see why it's a really unusual fuchsia in that it does grow quite tall it's another one that you can get up to a couple of meters i don't think the foliage is that great but when you get loads of blooms on it it really does look quite nice in the greenhouse and in fact it's the one my daughter says she prefers amongst all the different begonias she likes this one i've pruned it quite a few times otherwise it would go through the roof of the greenhouse but this is the only begonia that i've had that hasn't shown any signs of distress whatsoever when the temperature's been down to 12 and it is a multiple bloomer it's practically always in bloom it has been right the way through the winter and the spring and the summer months over the past year i have seen pictures of this with multiple stems emerging from the base but i've yet to see how that could actually happen i don't know whether those pictures have been doctored or there have been several plants planted together even when i pruned it down it hasn't sent any more shoots up from the base so i only have those single stem of this but i still rather like it and it's a nice one to have in the cooler side of the greenhouse in the corner so other begonias i've got over here i've got this begonia sea urchin this is the one of the only two that haven't really taken off yet i think feeling this pot it does seem to be quite packed in there and i think if i repotted that then it would really show me what it's capable of the pictures of the adult plant look rather different to what i've got here so at the moment it's not particularly inspiring to me but i think as it grows bigger it will look much much nicer so that's begonia sea urchin and then finally i'm going to show you this one is begonia silver jewel so this has got a few blooms on it but nothing too inspiring i must say but i do like the leaves on this one and again it's still in a small pot I think this one really to get the best out of it needs to be repotted up but this is another one that will do perfectly well at lower temperatures if it has to okay so i haven't shown you all of my begonias in my collection i have to save a few of them for the future but if you've been inspired by some of the begonias please put in the comments below which one was the one that really inspired you and if you do like begonias i think you should go and watch this playlist which i'm going to put over there right now and for now i'll see you on the next one bye